In the last video, I showed you how you could use Autodesk Fusion 360 to quickly model a part uh, using a photo reference. Uh, today, we're going to expand on that, and I'm going to show you how you can use other CAD models as well as photo references to uh, make an adapter to allow an UBIS style hot end to work on a Type A machine. So um, this is our previous model. This is what we're going to create today, uh, and here's our opening file. So uh, basically, I started uh, by bringing in my photo references using um, the techniques I showed you in the last video. Um, just to quickly review, the way that you do that is you insert uh, attach canvas here. Um, once you have that, you um, place it to where you want it, hit enter, and then under the canvas menu, right click on your image name and calibrate it. Um, you just calibrate by selecting two separate points on uh, your, your photo that you know the actual measurements for. And in this case, I have the caliper on the screen here. So we know exactly from here to here is uh, this number right here. So I uh, repeated that step um, to create uh, kind of a, two images here that are lined up so I can kind of like base my design off of it. Um, since the images are the right size for the, um, they're the size they are in the real world, this is actually uh, going to uh, aid us quite a bit in the fact that we can just quickly model this design. So um, the next thing that we need to do is bring in our model that we're going to use um, to build our design around. And so I am going to use uh, this Ubis hot end that I created and uh, over here in your data panel, um, you have all of your projects that you've created. So I wanna bring this model in, so I will right click on it and select insert into current design. And that will bring the, uh, the model into the design. Right here it's telling me that the uh, models will not be linked, which is uh, fine in this case, um, this, it, when they're linked, basically what it means is that the uh, if I change anything on this model, it will change all derivatives. Everything that comes after it uh, will will change accordingly as well. Um, the fact that they're not linked in this case it does not matter because this hot end is not going to change in any way. So we're going to go ahead and hit OK, and I'll get rid of my data panel here. And now I am going to use my navigation cube to look straight on. And I will use my little uh, mover handles here to uh, line up the center chamber with the, uh, the filament feed on the, uh, the original adapter in the photo. So looks good from that side. I'm gonna use, click on the navigation cube and uh, just make sure everything is lined up up here as well. Uh, basically, I want the filament to, to go directly down the hole here. This is the full size of the hole. It should be fine, uh, but I'm gonna nudge it over a tiny bit more, um, but I can't see my mover handles anymore. So I need to uh, select pivot, uh, this icon right here. If I, uh, if I select that, then it will allow me to choose a new point to uh, control my mover handles here. Uh, once I select a point where I want the handles to be, I will click this check mark and then I can uh, use it to actually move the object again. Okay, once I have it where I want, I'll hit OK. I'm going to back up and look at it. All right, and everything looks good right now. Um, the next thing we need to do is I need to um, make the box that um, will make up the actual adapter. And uh, there's two ways that we could do it. I could go under the sketch menu and um, draw basically this shape um, using uh, all the draw tools and then extruding it out. Um, but since it's just a simple box, I'm actually gonna use the primitive shapes over here under the create menu. And so I'll select box and then I wanna select which plane I want it on. Um, I can't select the image directly, so I'll select the plane that it's closest to, and then I'll look on straight on, and uh, I'll do my best 
to make this the exact same size. So just eyeballing it here, um, going really fast. That, that's how I did it originally as well. Um, once you uh, you set your two points on the rectangle, then you can kind of just grab and pull this thing out. Um, if you look at it from above, uh, you'll see that um, my hot end is actually bigger than the adapt the original adapter. So I'm going to need to compensate. I can't have it the exact same size. It needs to be a little bit wider. Uh, so I'm just going to pull it out a little bit more. Now, if I pull it out too far, it'll actually cut through the model. Um, up until here, it's two separate bodies. Uh, I think this is probably going to be fine, so I'll just go ahead and um, change it from cut to new body, and now the, it's two separate bodies. So I'll click OK, and now I want to move the box so that it's in line with the uh, top image as well. I'll select one of the faces and then right click, select move, and uh, just pull this forward to where I think it needs to be. Uh, look at it from the top, just trying to line up this back line really, make sure everything is, uh, is basically even. Okay, select okay, and uh, it's pretty good. Um, the next thing that I need to do is um, these are the mounting holes. This is how the adapter is actually held on underneath the extruder. And so I need to make sure that those line up. So I am going to just click on this face and then right click and create a sketch. I'm going to choose my circle tool, but instead of using the center diameter circle, I'm going to actually use a two point circle instead. Um, when I'm tracing things, I feel like it gives me greater control to actually find the edge that I want to click on and then just drag it and pull it to the, the right size. Okay, so I'm just eyeballing it here. Um, the next thing I'll do is, oops, control Z if you accidentally get out of there. Uh, I'm going to switch to my select tool. I'm going to select this circle here. I'm going to control C and then control V and then I'm just going to drag this straight over and place it directly over the other hole. This is how I did it originally and everything worked out so um, I have a feeling it's going to be fine this time around as well. Okay so um, again looking at it straight on everything looks like it matches up. I'm going to stop sketch and then I need to um, extrude through the body. So if I select inside the, the circle that I just drew on the sketch here, and then let me move on to the other side here. I'm gonna hold shift and select on the inside. Now I have both of them selected. Then if I right click, go to extrude. And then if I pull one direction with extrude, it builds, it will it, you know, it'll extrude out. If I pull the other way, it will cut through. So I'm going to go with that, cut it through, and click OK. Now everything should be lining up. The next thing that we need to worry about is the hot end itself actually will need to go into this adapter. And the best way to do that is we want to create a cavity that's the exact same shape as the, the hot end itself for it to fit into. Um, but when you're designing things for 3D printing, you have to keep in mind uh, tolerances. Um, so if you make a digital thing, um, two parts can have the like really, really, really close uh, numbers. You know, they're basically, um, if this is three millimeter size hole and then a three millimeter size bolt fits into that hole, it's fine when it's in the computer. But in the real world, the uh, bolt itself, it's going to be too too tight of a fit, basically. So what we need to do is we need to design the hole a little bit larger to make sure that it fits. And uh, a good rule of thumb I found is to use um, about uh, three to five percent uh, above or below 
in order to make sure that that hole is going to be the right size. So if I need to make sure that this extruder is going to fit in that, that hole, I'm going to resize my um, extruder here. I'm going to select it, go to modify, and I'm going to scale it to 1.05. That's going to make it a little bit larger. And then now I'm going to use that same um, I'm going to use the extruder to cut a hole this size into my adapter. So I'll go to, um, what do I want here? I want to um, use combine again, and I'm going to select the, um, the adapter box here. And that's my, my uh, target body. That's the thing that's going to be affected. And the tool body is the thing we're going to use to cut it. So I'm going to use the hot end to cut it. And I want to change this from join. If I hit, hit it now, these would fuse together. I want to cut it. And then I also want to use keep tools because I don't want, once this used, we use this to cut uh, this shape in here, I don't want to uh, lose it. Um, just use it once as a cutting tool. I want to keep it around. So I'll say OK. And uh, now if I turn off my hot end here, you can see that the um, extruder has been, uh, the shape has been cut out here. And so this is uh, where the filament would come down. And so this is going to actually be pretty helpful for us. So I'm going to um, just use this. I'm going to select this face here and then I'm going to use press pull and I'm just going to, uh, oops, I'm sorry. I am not going to use press pull. I am going to use extrude instead. Uh, and I'm going to extrude through that body so the filament has a, a place for it to come out. I'll select OK. And uh, now the last major step that we need to do is we need to split this box into two bodies, a front and a back to allow us to put the hot end in there. So we'll have a back and then we'll place the hot end inside. Then we'll put the top on the on there and put the bolts and bolt the whole thing to the, uh, uh, the type A machine. And so the way we're gonna line that up is we're gonna use offset plane. And I'm gonna select this front plane and then uh, looking at it, turn off one of those images real quick. Um, looking at it from the top, we basically just want to divide it right here in the middle. This is our, our center point, basically. So if I look at it directly from the top, there we go. Look at it from the top. It doesn't have to be super precise, but uh, this is how I'm going to do it right there. Select OK. And basically, this is going to be our cutting tool this time. So instead of using combine, instead we're going to use a split body. Uh, the body we're going to split is our um, adapter box here. The splitting tool is going to be our new plane. I'll select that and you'll see where it's going to cut through. I'll click OK and uh, now you can see that we have a dividing line there. I'll turn that off so we can just see. And then we have our two, uh, two faces here. Okay. And uh, the last thing that I'll probably do is, um, well, I guess two more things. I'm going to remove this cone area because th this doesn't really need to be in here. Um, and so I guess one way I could probably do it is just select it and hit delete and then select that face and then um, extrude out. Oops, sorry, like that. And now it just cut that whole top part off. But it's still on my other side that I uh, had turned off. So I'm going to repeat the same steps. Select that face, hit delete. Select it and uh, extrude up through the piece and cut it away. Okay. And now that is basically what we needed to do. Uh, if you wanted to stylize it a little bit more, this is uh, this would be a good time. Um, 
Here I can select um, the outside of our bolt holes here on the front and say I want to make sure my bolts fit a little more flush. I can um, make an inset a little bit by using a chamfer. So I'll just uh, right click and select chamfer and I'll pull this just to where I think it looks good. That's probably fine. I'll click OK. And then in the original uh, design, I also embellished it with uh, putting some um, fillets on the edge here as well. So like a chamfer is like cutting the corner off diagonally, whereas a fillet is like rounding off the corners. So I'll round off these corners a little bit. And again, this is not for any reason other than I thought it looked good at the time. So there we go. And I click OK and we are done. So that is how quickly you can make an adapter that will um, work with an object in the real world. Um, in my next video, I will show you how you can use uh, photo references and the spline tool to uh, add a logo to your uh, design. So, all right, thank you. Hopefully this was helpful and uh, have a good day. All right.